Hi, Pat O'Neill, physician assistant, and what I want to talk a little bit about right now is Good Samaritan laws. These are the laws that protect you from whenever you come to the aid of a bystander. For example, you're driving down the road, you see a, a car flip in front of you, roll a couple times, you decide you're going to get out and do the right thing and help them out. This is exactly what we want you to do. The law wants you to do that, and in some cases, like my state of Texas, if you do not render aid, for example, let's say you hit a pedestrian, a bicyclist, somebody else like that, if you leave the scene, um, you are definitely in the wrong, you are going to get hammered by the law. If you stop and render aid, most of the time you are protected. Somebody that is trying to do the right thing somebody that is working within the scope of their own abilities, if they come to the aid of, of somebody injured, they should not be prosecuted for that. They should not have to risk losing their house, their car, their, their livelihood, because they were, they were trying to be compassionate. In most states, as long as you are operating within the scope of your own abilities, you're protected. You're, you're fine. So what does that mean, the scope of my own abilities? Well, let's say I've had a CPR class uh, that taught me how to do an artificial airway, uh, rescue breathing, um, CPR, whatever. As long as I have been taught that at some point and, and I can verbalize some form of competency about it, I'm going to be protected for those actions. If I was a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout and I got a first aid merit badge and they go back and they look at that and they say, okay, well at one point Pat was taught how to put on a field dressing. He was taught how to uh, open an airway, uh, put on a splint. Okay, I'm covered for those items uh, and I don't have to risk the fact that uh, I'm going to have some ambulance chaser uh, try to sue me for everything that I, I potentially own. Where you get into trouble is if you try to do something that you were never trained on. For example, if I happen to be watching a show and I saw MacGyver whip out his ballpoint pin and make a, a cricothyroidotomy right through the dude's neck using his little Swiss Army knife, um, and I try to do that, and I'm not trained for it, yeah, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for that, especially if there's a complication that arose from that procedure. Start an IV, and I have not been trained on how to start an IV, and I'm just over there just jamming, poking on this guy's arm because some guy handed me an IV needle in a bag and said, here, go ahead and start this up, and I, and I don't tell him, listen, I'm not trained how to do that. If I'm just kind of fumbling around or I haven't done it in a while, uh, you know, there can be potential problems with that. So the bottom line to the whole Good Samaritan law is, is stick with what you know. Do what you feel comfortable with that if you had to go to a court of law, you can sit there and say, listen, uh, I did know how to put on this bandage. I did know how to do a head tilt chin lift or a jaw thrust. Uh, I was trained on that at one time. This person was going to die. I went ahead and did it. Um, and they still ended up succumbing to their injuries. But, you know, I was doing my best. I was trying to help the guy out. You're going to be fine. Um, now, if you're, if you're not trained in any of that, if you've never had any first aid training, um, you know, and you're running over there trying to perform CPR and you've never had a CPR class and you're busting all kinds of ribs and you're, you're puncturing lungs and, and everything else, um, yeah, you're going to have a hard time defending that. Um, that's when you're, you're going to kind of have to hold back a little bit. You're going to say, you know, uh, I saw that on the Learning Channel and I'm pretty sure I might know how to do it, but um, I, I don't feel comfortable. I think I could actually do more harm than good. Now, that's a good litmus test to, or standard to look at. If you think you're going to do more harm than good, well, then don't do it. Um, if you're not sure, play it safe. 
you know um, l let another bystander come up and you can ask you, you you can say hey does anybody know how to do this this guy's having a hard time breathing anybody know how to clear an airway anybody know how to do this um, if worse comes to worse and you're just totally inept and you don't have any training at all fine go out and direct some traffic or something um, you can still be useful without actually working on the patient and potentially causing more harm in medicine we have a say saying um, primum non nocere first do no further harm try to live by that if you if you don't think you're going to benefit the patient uh, if you don't think you're part of the solution uh, don't force yourself to do something that, that could end up hurting the patient even worse one recommendation i would absolutely make is is that everyone watching this video you should know what the good samaritan law is in your particular state that is crucial you need to know because you, you can't look it up at the moment that you're trying to act like the the same example we had earlier the car flipping through the air and rolling that's not the time to whip out your your smartphone and look up good samaritan law for my state uh, you have to know it ahead of time so put that little bit of research in and and you're going to feel a lot more comfortable when you do get to the side of that patient and you're trying to render some aid so that's the best advice i have for you on the good samaritan law remember in most cases you're going to be protected just for trying to help out in all cases you will be protected as long as you are operating within the scope of your experience and your training so again my name is pat o'neill i hope to see you at some of the other videos thanks